So welcome to Black Hat Hacking Series. So in this video, we are going to do a small practical regarding the silent exploits or maybe the semi-silent. So if you remember in our last video, I have shown you some of the examples that how what a silent exploit is mean about and how actually they look like even. But I just shown you a way or like a picture of these type of builders. Can you see it's written like fast silent exploit builder. And like there could be so many names like that like HT silent exploit builder, fast silent exploit builder, cool silent exploit builder. So it doesn't matter. Actually they are silent. So it's a builder. It's builder means it's just a graphical access which use an engine behind it and that engine actually generates a doc file for you. So my point is that I always prefer to use directly the engine rather than using this type of builders. Engine is always into a code form. So the real exploits always look like this. Like I have, which we have uh, tried to do some changes. Like they always look like into a code form. This is a, exactly an engine which is being used to generate a doc file. But these type of builders are mostly like, you know, built by some type of scammers. They say, okay, buy our builder and it generates a doc file. Actually, it's not the beauty of this builder. It use always an engine or a, this exploit file, a Ruby file behind it. This file is actually the thing which generates the file. Now, that's why they just make a very cool builders. They're very easy functions that you select just 2007, 2010 and generate. But they could be fake even. Maybe they do not have even the engine behind it. They just have this interface so that you can see an interface and you they can sell it to you because you just see okay they have something look like this where you can give your exe you can give the license and you can generate a doc maybe it doesn't even generate it's just a dummy software so but if you have the engine like the one i have obviously i have the real thing which actually generates it so i always prefer to work with the the directly code exploits and that's how the exploits always look like exploits always primarily come with the ruby file i'll explain you how the codes look like and everything in the, in a moment but you should always even make a habit that you should avoid this type of builders and try to make a habit to work with the real exploits if you are going to use a silent exploit or if you want to use some kind of ram cost type of things then you do not need to you know need these even builders or not even the engine type of the code type of exploits but let's do a practical. Let's close this uh, type of builders and let's directly go to the code level. So this is exploit. And if you see, I'll, I'll, I'll not make this video much complex. I'll just show you like how it have to be built. Basically, if you want to make your own exploits, you need to learn Ruby or some programming language. Or if you can, if you want to buy it, always prefer that you buy it into a code form, that raw form engine form which you can use anyway you can also make a builder which can use this engine behind it or you can also use it directly like into a code form so if you can see i'm including some of the modules for http server for file formats the powershell which is pre-installed language in the windows 7 windows 8 and 10 and i'm also including the exe modules then it's going to generate uh, uh, it will show you the names basically and then uh, I'm also selecting the architecture that whether it could be 32-bit or whether the, the victim could be 64-bit it will work on both of them but the platform should be only Windows it will not work on any Linux or Mac or anything because Microsoft Office can only be installed on the Windows so first of all it will verify that it's Windows only then it will run else it will false and even you can see I'm using the payload windows slash metapeter reverse underscore TCP. It's a very common payload. Reverse TCP means it will give you a reverse connection back. That the, the victim will connect back to attacker automatically. And uh, it will save into a invoice.rtf file after it will be building and it will use PowerShell to inject into the temporary folders. And uh, after that there are so many random functions are being used to generate hacks and uh, I think that's fine so let's not make this video much complex and uh, let me show you how to use it so first of all I have to copy this uh, exploit into my metasploit folder 
then we can use the Metasploit. So let's copy this, uh, this exploit in our Metasploit folder. Then we can use Metasploit as our main tool to use this engine. Now, if you want to learn more about Metasploit, Kali Linux, or this type of hackings even, which are like related to little professional level, we'll also be running one more series after this black hat in which we will, we will be learning with the more advanced type of hacks through Kali Linux, Metasploits, Exploits, etc. So, I just copy it that this is a command that you are saying that copy the file of which we have the name which we have the doc exploit and the path where you want to paste it. So copy I go to the, my desktop and I paste it. So this is copied in our Metasploit. That's it. Done. Now we can start our Metasploit and we can use this exploit to generate a doc file. So now I search for same name which we have copied in it in the Metasploit htdoc. and it found it so I do use I use this exploit show options what are the things you have to set for this one just the L host and L port it's by default selecting double four double four and uh, okay set L host and here it would be your Kali IP. I copy it. I'll host is your own IP. If you use VPS to hack, now Kali cannot, Kali IP cannot be used over the internet. Obviously, you have to use your VPS. We can also install Metasploit on our VPS as well. And then we'll give in the host as the VPS IP. Set payload. It's already set, but I set it again. And we can do just exploit and it have generated the file for the doc now let's upload and send this file let me upload uh, on the copy it on the desktop and that's it your job is done this is the file and uh, we can upload on the internet and we can send it to attacker I'll upload upload files.io and we can drag and drop and this is the link we can go there Now if you see, oh, we have generated the file and server is also started. If anyone will open your uh, doc file or the RTF file, which also looks like a doc file, anyone will open it, will get his control automatically in the Metasploit. We are waiting. Slow download. Save file and that's it now Microsoft Office have to be installed and once the installation finish I'll show you how to double click the file and how to get the victim back on the Kali Linux so the installation is ready so what we'll do is we'll go to our downloads and if you see this is the invoice file which we have downloaded before so let me open my Metasploit which is waiting for the victim and if I double click this file, it says, okay, yes, nothing is there in the doc file. Okay, that's it. 
and if you go to Kali Linux you'll see one request is coming something is happening on Kali one request is coming from the victim delivering the stage and one session open that's it you got the control of the victim so what I'll do is sessions hyphen I to interact what's the session number two and we have the metaprator sysinfo we are on Windows 7 screenshot screenshot is saved in the root what's the name HH that's what it's opening on the so if you do run VNC you can also see the live screen of the victim okay if you see this is the victim screen you are viewing if I minimize something you'll also see it's minimized here on the Kali so there are so many things basically which we can do while to control the victim through the, mat the Metasploit as well same way like you control from the RAM cost but this one is little typical because as you have to do commands for everything so this uh, Kali Linux and the Metasploit is very deep which we will be covering in our next series so right now I hope you got an idea how the silent exploits work but the one which I have it's the semi-silent because it's not completely FUD and may it, it could not even run on the very latest 2016 version of the Microsoft Office as well but still I will call it a semi-silent but let's scan it its detection ratio that how much antivirus detects it last time I scanned it it was just 4 out of 35 and it's still today 4 out of 35 that's it only 4 antivirus are catching it so I would uh, it's really a good semi silent exploit it could still work to catch so many victims which you cannot even imagine if it would be zero and it could work on a very latest version as well but that would cost in thousands of dollars but that would be the mind blowing in the best so I hope you got an idea how the real silent or semi-silent exploits work without the builders and the, with the builders. So see you in the next video and thank you for watching.